Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to chapter 19. The Ten Commandments teach us to love. Chapter 19. The Ten Commandments teach us to love. I want you to look at the, the you know, the uh, photo on the first page, and you see the Roman numerals of the Ten Commandments written on the tablets that God gave to Moses. This is what we'll be exploring in this session. But as always, boys and girls, before we proceed, we like to start with a prayer. And so we pray. Blessed is the child of God who find happiness in the law of the Lord. Lord God, thank you for sending us Jesus to teach us how to live as your friends. Amen. Here is a question for you. Why do you think it is important to have rules or laws? Why do you think it is important to have rules or laws? Um, I think it's important because if there are no rules or laws, people will do whatever they like. And there will be chaos, there will be confusion. Imagine there were no traffic rules. Uh, imagine there were no speed limits. Imagine there were no speed bumps or speed breakers. Um, there will be confusion and accidents all over the place. Imagine that we don't have traffic lights, you know, um, telling people when to move and when to stop. Everyone will be in a hurry and will be moving at the same pace. And wow, imagine the lives that will be lost. So that's one of the reasons it is important to have rules and laws. And imagine also that you could just walk into someone's house and take over the house by force. And there are no rules or no laws to control that. Well, the stronger people will dispossess everyone and the weaker people will live on the streets. And so that's the reason that uh, laws and rules are important. Everywhere we go, there are rules and laws we must obey. God gave us the Ten Commandments to teach us to love God, others, and ourselves. What are some of the Ten Commandments you already know? What are some of the Ten Commandments that you already know? This is what we'll be exploring in this chapter. I will now turn it over to Mrs. Stever to tell us about living the commandments. Okay, boys and girls, you should have your book, and we're on page 166, Living the Commandments. The faith focus in this chapter we're learning will be how do the Ten Commandments help us to love God? And the faith words, Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the laws God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. They guide us to love God and love others as we love ourselves. God's laws. The Bible tells many stories about the covenant. We read about the covenants God made with Noah and with Abraham. Many years after Abraham, God made a covenant with Moses and God's people, the Israelites. God called Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai and gave him the Ten Commandments. Moses took the commandments that God had given him and went down from the mountain. 
He explained the laws to the Israelites who agreed to obey them. The Ten Commandments helped the Israelites to live as God's special people. The Ten Commandments in our book is on page 287. So sometime this week you can read them over and learn them even more closely than as we're teaching them to you. It says here in the right corner the activity, so just take your pencil. You don't need to pause the video. We'll be able to do it together. Describe why living the Ten Commandments is important. So why do you think it's important that you're learning these Ten Commandments and for you to live the Ten Commandments, what they say, God's laws, what we should live like in our community, in our life together? I put... If I live out the commandments, I will live my faith and be closer to God. But put down what you feel like is a reason to live out the Ten Commandments and why it's important. Let's look at this beautiful stained glass picture, and that's a picture of Moses. You can tell it's him because he's got the Ten Commandments, the tablets as they call them, in each of his hands. And he's there, and it's a stained glass imagery that sometimes we've talked about as a form of art that you usually most times see in actually churches. And it's reflective of just him there holding the Ten Commandments that God had given to him when he reached the top of Mount Sinai. Let's now go to the next page, 167, showing our love for God. The first three commandments help us show our love for God. The first commandment teaches that we are to worship only God. We are to love and honor God above all else. The first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have other gods before me, taken from Scripture in the Bible. The second commandment teaches that we are to respect the name of God. We are to use God's name truthfully. The second commandment is, You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. And the third commandment teaches that we are to keep Sunday holy. Sunday is the Lord's day. Catholics must take part in the celebration of Mass on Saturday evening or Sunday. The third commandment is remember to keep holy the Lord's day. It says here in the right, name one way you can live each of the three, the first three commandments. You just jot it down right next to that box. I put simply, God is number one. That's our first commandment. And that's easy to just remember. God is number one. And then respect God's name respect God's name, and then to go to Mass on Sunday. So that would be three ways that you can live out those first three commandments. At the top of the page, we have faith-filled people, and it's John the Apostle. So let's read about John the Apostle. It says, St. John the Apostle was the brother of James the apostle, and the youngest disciple. John was also one of the evangelists or writers of the four Gospels. John taught, God is love. The church celebrates the feast day of St. John the Apostle on December 27th. 
So when we learn things and we read our Bible and we read things from John, it's about John the Apostle. And whenever we have these faith-filled um, people, ideas of different people in church history, I always recommend to even research it a little more. Because again, you'll find the life of John the Apostle as you read it to be just one of fascination and a commitment to his faith and a follower of Jesus. And it's always good to just read more and more about the people that they reflect on in our chapter. Father Virginus now is going to walk us through on this page, the next one, 168, called God is Love. God is love. God is love. The Bible tells us that God is love. The three persons in God, the Holy Trinity, love each other with a perfect love. Jesus taught us that God loves us and shares his love with us. We share in the love of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are to love God and one another as God loves us. Uh, before we do the activity, I want you to look at that, um, the picture of this family, and everyone is laughing and giggling, um, like they are having dinner or something, and there is such joy, and joy is a sign of God's presence. Uh, Pope Francis has been telling us that we should be a people of joy. Um, and you see that there, because um, joy also is a sign of love. Um, and if you look at the other picture and you look at this little child um, holding the crutches to support her, you find out that, you know, um, the older girl and the mom or grandmom are all laughing and showing her love and kissing her. And this is just love in action, the expression of love. Now let us look at the activity in blue. Unscramble the letters. Discover how we are to love others. Let the capital letters help you. The first um, word, how to love, um, is um, E-V-O-L. And it says the capital letters should help us. And so um, that is something we can do together. Um, so you take the capital L and play around with the, the other alphabets. And you have love, love, L-O-V-E, love. And the second word is S-A, and um, we just switch that around, as, A-S, as. Um, then we have O-G-D, and let the capital letter help us, the capital G, and you have God. And then we come to S-E-V-O-L, and we can turn that around um, beginning with the L um, so far it is love as God loves L-O-V-E-S loves and then here you have O-Y-U um, and you can use the Y to start and you have U love as God loves you that is based on Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. It actually says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So it's another way of saying, love as God loves you. Okay, boys and girls, let us look at how our church makes a difference. Churches. In the first 200 years after the first Pentecost, there were no churches like the ones we have today. 
the community of the church gathered in homes to hear the scriptures read, to learn the teachings of the apostles, and to celebrate Eucharist. It was only after the emperor of Rome gave Christians permission to worship in public that Christians began to build churches. The first churches were called basilicas. The Basilica of St. John Lateran is the oldest basilica in Rome. It is the cathedral of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. There are many different types of churches. Every church is a sign of the faith in God of the people who built it. And we are presented with um, different kinds of churches here. He said, take a tour of your church. That's um, the writing in blue. Take a tour of your church. How is your church a sign of the faith of the people of the community, of your parish community? Be nice for you to, next time you come to the Church of the Resurrection, to look at how the church is configured and how it is a sign of the faith of this parish community, um, beginning from the way we see, um, because the way we see tells about how we connect with one another. Uh, you see the men eyes, you see the side eyes, then you see also cheers um, on the side. Um, we have the common area where people before the pandemic could gather to um, enjoy the presence of one another. We have the cry room, so children have their place and babies have their place. Um, all these are a sign of the fact that everyone within our parish community is welcome. But I want us to look at some of the uh, photos of the churches presented here. Um, you look at that, the one at the bottom left, and you see St. John Lateran, that's in Rome, Italy. If you have the privilege of visiting Rome, this is one of the places to go. It looks ancient. It's so beautiful. Um, it's one of the places you might want to go to. Um, then you have the, the one at the bottom, most bottom, and you have St. Mary's, Miami in Florida. Wow, that's a pretty church surrounded by uh, palm trees on both sides. Um, that's beautiful. And then you have St. Mary of the Lake, White Bear Lake in Minnesota. Um, that is also um, a beautiful. And one thing you find out is that each of these three churches are different. They look architecturally different. They look different in their designs. And those designs say something about the fate of those who built them. Now, let us go to the top right corner and look at our Catholic faith. Cathedrals. The cathedral is the main church of the archdiocese or diocese. It is the archbishop's or bishop's church. The word cathedral comes from the word cathedra, which means cheer. The bishop's cheer is a symbol that the bishop is the chief teacher and celebrant of the liturgy of the diocese in the cathedral. Okay, boys and girls, I will now turn it over to Mrs. Stever to tell us what difference faith can make in our lives. Okay, what difference does faith make in my life? You and your family make Sunday a special day. You join other families in your parish for the celebration of Mass. You spend time together and show your love of God for one another. Work with two partners or since you don't have really anybody there, just write out 
kind of like what would be a good play about a family deciding to make Sunday a day to celebrate their love for God and others. You don't have to act it out, but just write something in under God's special day that would be mostly that you would share with people on a, how a family could decide to make Sunday a day to celebrate their love for God. We're going to have you pause the video and do the activity and then come back. I'll do the activity too, and then we'll continue down to my faith choice. Okay, so God's special day. So I wrote with a big sun. You can see my picture, and I put good morning. It's Sunday, and we'll go together and go to Mass and pray and be with others. And then I put a little symbol of a heart because we're with others and we're showing our love for our faith, our love for Jesus, our love for our family and our parish community. So that's how I answered a way that we would be able to tell people and even act that out if we were going to do it as even a little bit of a play. My faith choice this week, they're asking you to show God and others your love and respect for God. So write down a few words about what you're going to do this week to show love and respect for God. I'm now going to have Father Virginus join us on the next page because it's the time in our chapter where we pray together and then we look over on things that we remember about what we've just learned about in this chapter. We pray. Prayer of adoration. A prayer of adoration tells God that he alone is God. Let us pray this prayer together. I'll be the leader, and you and Mrs. Steva will be all. God we cannot see you, yet we do believe. We adore you, O oh God. There is no other God but you. We adore you, O oh God. We know you are our God because your Son has tell, told us so. We adore you, O oh God. We make our prayer in his name. So now let's look at the bottom. We remember. It has complete the commandments and fill in the missing words. So get your pencil. We'll read it. Kind of give you the answers, but you should have the same answers I have because we're learning this together. So I am the Lord your blank. You shall not have other gods before me. That's right. God. I am the Lord your God. You shall not have other gods before me. Number two, you shall not take the blank of the Lord your blank in vain. What have we been learning about? You shall not take the name of of the Lord your God in vain. And then with our third commandment, remember to keep blank the Lord's day. Oh, I helped you. I, put, I gave you the answer. The Lord's day. Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. So you have it right there. Okay, get your mom or your dad. It's chapter 19, and it's the part we call With My Family. Mom or dad, this is the time for you to read the page thoroughly. You can ask your children what they've just learned in this chapter 19. Read it completely. And then sharing God's word, it tells you, read together the story in Exodus and emphasize that the Ten Commandments teach us 
how to live the great commandment. And then there's a prayer of adoration that we just did together as a class. And it has a leader and an all part. So that's always a good way to pray together as a family. And it's on page 171. And then making a difference, they have three opportunities for you to make a difference this upcoming week. Or perhaps you have an idea after you talk to your children about the chapter. I highlighted, invite each family member to share the feast day or holy day of obligation that is their favorite. Talk about how each of these feasts or holy days help your family show love and respect for God. I thought that would be a very good way to just kind of have a conversation this week and look at the feast days and the holy days of obligation that we believe as Catholics in our faith. And then add to that also what might be a favorite feast day or a holy day of obligation. Father Virgin, is, can you give us a blessing as we close out chapter 19 together? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your time. God bless you and your families. Enjoy your week. God bless you.